<clears throat> All right, everybody, we are back. Uh, we are inside today. Got something a little different going on. What we are gonna do is we are gonna customize this little bad boy. Um, we're gonna polish this one up. So in some of the other videos you've seen it uh, nice and polished. I'm gonna show you how we do that. Uh, I do wanna share one little tip as well. Um, this is a little Dremel wrench uh, and it is the perfect size for the kind of R188 retention bearings like so. Look at that, that just fits right in there. Perfect. Uh, everyone I've tried works on the Triton, works on the Zentri, works on the Zenduo, um, works on everything that uses, it seems to use this type of retention for an R188. So just so you know, pro tip, you don't need a special tool if you have a Dremel. Uh, in any event though, let's uh, get into this. So what we've got is um, we've got a series of wet sand sandpapers and we're gonna go through. Um, pretty straightforward, uh, nothing too fancy. Uh, to reduce and really make sure there's no scratches, you wanna use uh, with water. I'm starting with uh, 400 grit uh, sandpaper. You can pick this stuff up pretty cheap. Um, since it's flat, um, I'm using a flat surface. We're just gonna do that a little bit and um, not much is happening yet, but I might need to switch to 240. I forget what I was started with last time, but I'm seeing the water get blue here. And I realize this is gonna shake my camera, or shake the table, but the camera's on it, so it might not be too bad, so. But we're starting to get there, see that? Uh, for the sake of time, yeah, I may want to mm, switch this. Um, we are boy, shaking this camera quite a bit. I didn't really think this through. Well, we've already started, so let's go with it and see how bad it is or is not. So uh, I'm just doing circles. Uh, you can certainly do straight up and down. In fact, if you're not using anything too, too uh, fine, like if you're not going to a really fine grit, um, you may want to just do uh, up and down so you get kind of a consistent pattern, consistent scratches. Um, so we're getting there. We still got a little ways to go um, for the sake of not being here uh, all day. Um, where's my 240? We will be all day if I can't find this. Oh, it's right here. Let's go to 240 for a second, people. It's just pretty aggressive, so. Sand it, sand it, get some. Look at that, see that? Um, so you know you're ready to move to the next step when the scratch pattern gets consistent when you're not seeing really the scratches from the previous step. So right now we're just trying to remove all the blue. Uh, and if you look, I see some lightness in there. Um, so we're gonna keep going with that. Let's see if I'm doing circles. I get these cool little swirls. If I'm doing just this one direction, terrible band, uh, you can get those kind of up and down scratches, right? So it's funny, the camera's making it look a lot better than it looks in person. So it's probably gonna look really good to you guys when we're done here. Uh, but what I'm looking for now is I'm just looking to see that I'm consistent. So I'm seeing a little bit under there um, where it's kind of a little yellow right around the ring, uh, but the blue is off. So I feel pretty comfortable moving to the uh, to the next step here. I've got a little thing of water right next to me. It won't really fit in frame. Um, so we're just gonna, I'm just dunking that in to kind of get any of the excess off. Um, that's something on this here too. This is a pretty messy little table. So you want the surface you're working on to be flat, or as close to flat as you can. Uh, a countertop is probably the best thing for something like this. All right. And once you do the first step, that's really the longest. This whole process doesn't actually take that long. As we'll see, since I'm doing no editing here. We'll dip that in the water, get kind of all that grit off of there. Um, and the scratch pattern is looking pretty close to good. I'm gonna go just a little bit more. Uh, and I'm gonna do it a little bit lighter. I'm not gonna put a lot of pressure. The harder you push, the kind of the deeper those cuts get and the more sanding you've got to do. So once you get to these steps, you wanna go pretty light. So we might be able to stop shaking the camera here a bit too, if we're going nice and light. All right. That's looking pretty good there. So we'll dip it, move that out of the way. Let's move to 600 grits. So we went 240, 400, 600, 600. Yeah, just 
smooth it out. It feels, it starts to feel much smoother as well as we go. Um, the paper is, uh, almost doesn't feel like it's really doing much, but believe me, she's cutting. Right, we're getting, those scratches are getting um, finer, right, which is what we want. And we're again just looking for a consistent pattern again. This is really easy because it's nice and smooth. Now I'm going to be doing a similar thing on my Triton version 2. Uh, if you remember my last video, um, I was showing you kind of those edges and how I was going to polish it. I'm going to be doing the same thing except for I'll probably be doing it under sink and running water. And I'll just be grabbing the sandpaper like this and getting to the creases. Especially as it gets wet, it kind of bends around pretty good. So, alright, that's probably good. The scratches are looking consistent. So we'll dip it. Just dip it. Alright, 800. Water. Uh, and the more water you have, like again, especially like doing it under like a consistent flow of water, um, will make the, the swirl marks and the scratches even finer. So you definitely want to keep these guys wet as you go. I'm not seeing a ton of difference here yet, but we'll just keep rocking it. I'm seeing the water change color and it's kind of shining a little bit. You might be able to see that. Yeah, see how there's a little bit of brass basically in there. Although I've used, these are the same pieces of paper I used for the last one. Except for the 2000. I skipped the 2000 last time because I didn't have it. So I'm hoping that'll just make the time on the 4000 a little bit less. So. Alright, we're starting to, starting to get more of a polish. We can still see some of those cuts. Um, and it's totally fine to move up a step and then go back. In fact, sometimes that is, uh, the best way to go. So this is the 2000, it's a brand new piece. It's very satisfying how this feels, I'll be honest. There's a certain like, certain amount of resistance, yet a certain amount of smoothness to doing something like this. I'm gonna go back and forth just for a minute just to kind of make the pattern consistent and I can see how I'm doing with those scratches beneath because this is the step where I really want to start seeing it starting to get a little more mirror. Now the last one I did, I still did see a lot of scratches in it even though there was a lot polished through and pretty much looked like a mirror, especially at the right angle. So yeah, see that? That's kind of what we're looking for. So when all those linear scratches essentially are not, have removed all those kind of side to side scratches like you're seeing there, um, then we know we're kind of in good shape. So it's probably a good idea to switch up your pattern until the very end. The swirls kind of help um, make it a little more uniform when you are having scratches, but since we're trying to get to a mirror, it probably doesn't matter. Let's uh, take a look. You can still see some swirls in there, but we're getting, yeah, especially like right in there. Let's go just side to side like this. Oh, bumped the tripod. Bumped it. But these are pretty sweet little spinners. I've really been, <clears throat> probably should take a minute while we're polishing this because there really isn't much to talk about about this process while I'm doing this. Um, the old Triton version two, because I've been posting a ton of shit about that. Sorry, stuff. Um, yeah, you see all the material that's coming off there? Um, posting a lot of stuff online about it. Um, I got some one drop bearings. Um, boy, I'm getting sidetracked here. Let's finish talking about the Triton, then we'll talk about the one drop bearings. Um, but been spinning that for, uh, you know, got it on Monday, it's now Saturday. Um, been spinning it all week, and the weight is becoming less and less of a thing every day for kind of like my daily fidget. Um, it just kind of feels uh, really nice, I like the weight to it. Um, I'm kind of going up and down in the speeds, I'm using that ceramic hybrid mostly. Um, and the speeds, I think on Wednesday, I was starting to get up into the 14 minutes consistently, they're starting to get closer to the 10 to 12 again. Cleaned it a couple times, so I'm not sure what's going on with it, but we're gonna keep working at it. Um, but um, I'm really enjoying the feel of it. Um, I don't have it on me right now while I'm doing this, but there's something about the way it spins. And um, if you kind of look at the design of it at some point, it's got flat sides and then they kind of taper to this point and then kind of cut into the grooves for your fingers. And where it kind of tapers to that point when it's spinning, it makes this really kind of cool effect where you're, you're looking at this kind of like point in the middle of the side as it spins. It's this really kind of cool little transparent optical illusion. I really dig it. See that? So we could keep going at this all day, but you can kind of see how we're just about only showing those up and down and side to side scratches. That's kind of what we want before we move to the next step. So, um, so we'll, we'll go on to the next step for the sake of this video here. Uh, so this is the 4,000 grips. Again, we want a lot of water. Let me uh, dip it. Just dip it. 
You just nibbling? I don't know what that's from. Someone tell me. No one told me what the reference was in the last video either. Um, it takes a tough man to make a tender chicken. Uh, it's a line from uh, Short Circuit 2. He's uh, Johnny Five is uh, sending a little radio signal to this uh, electronic billboard on the side of a building in New York City while his uh, friend is trying to have a date with his lady. And he's trying to help him talk and then he gets a bus blocks his little radio antenna and then the actual billboard starts showing and it was a chicken ad. And uh, he just says that in the middle of his date. And it's kind of, you know, it's a kind of silly, kind of silly thing. So if you haven't seen the Short Circuit movies, uh, I don't know if they uh, if they age well other than kind of being a nostalgic thing for me. So maybe they're good, maybe they're not. But I really enjoy them because I really enjoyed them as a, as a youngin, as a little guy. All right, let's see what we're starting to look at now. Yeah, see that mirror really starting to show up, guys? So again, the more you do this, the more time you take on each step, the more of those scratches you get out, right? Um, but initially, one of the biggest important things is getting, making sure it's really nice and flat. So that very first step, getting all that blue off and getting it consistent, because if you don't get it flat there, um, you're not removing much material at this step, right? This 4,000 grit is removing virtually no material. Um, so it's not really gonna level it out if it's not already level. So um, that's also why it's important to do it with a nice flat surface, so. Um, being that there's a little bit of give in the paper, if I really push on one side like this, I can probably try to polish that side a little bit more than the others. But yeah, so we're getting there. And then the final step, we'll really kind of take it up to another step real quick. So we'll go just a little bit more for the sake of this video because we're already 11 minutes and you're just watching me just polish this better, so. Um, but I'm gonna have to go back and redo this and I don't want to waste my time either. I don't want to waste your time, but I don't want to waste my time. All right. Hmm, I don't know, it looks like we got some weird marks there. I think there's some stuff under the paper here. So let's just do it real light. I'm applying virtually no pressure, just spinning it. Spin it the other way, spin it this way. Put a little more water on there. We'll dip it, dip my little water bucket over here, rinse it off. All right, I'm okay with that for now. You'll see what happens here in a minute. So we'll take this off. Now I'm gonna dry this off right here with this really old nasty paper towel I used to clean my airbrush. I don't like to waste things. So if it's still got some clean left in, I keep using it. Just one of those guys. That's also why I'm using, just tearing off little pieces of sandpaper as opposed to using the whole thing and reusing them. Waste not, want not, something like that. So we'll put that up there. So we're also gonna dry this bad boy off. So see, it's a little wet. So where are we gonna dry it? I'm a guy, so I'm gonna dry it on my pants. That's just how we do, right guys? If there's any ladies watching this, probably more ladies now that I'm doing spinners. I think the ladies are a little more into spinners than they are into Warhammer. Uh, but if you don't know ladies, um, if uh, God didn't want men to use, no, how does it go? If God had wanted us to use napkins, he wouldn't have given us pants, right? Something like that. All right, so it's nice and dry. Again, a lot of scratches, but now what we do, bum, 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 this is what really makes the magic. Um, this is just a buffing compound. Oh, I got it for sharpening knives. This is literally just a piece of scrap leather. Like I got in a, a box, like nothing, nothing fancy. Um, we're gonna basically color on this. Like it's a crayon, get some green on there. Ooh, that camera doesn't like that. Luckily I don't have to do it too much because there's already stuff on there. So this is more just showing you how to do it. You don't have to apply a ton of this every time, so you can really use a lot. Um, I use this for buffing on, uh, dropping my knives uh, as well. Brass is a much softer material than the steel in my knives, so the brass comes off and turns this black real quick, where a knife would take a little longer to do that. So but we're just gonna take this, we're just gonna do the same thing we did before. And you'll watch that green turn to black as it removes and, and gets that stuff off. And now we're polishing. I should have shown you a little bit better um, what this looked like, but if you really wanna see it, go back and just pause and look at the scratches that are in there and watch what happens in a second here. It's almost magical. I feel like Billy May, you know, in some infomercial when you see the magic that happens here. Really starts polishing. And again, you can see those little scratches I got in there. I think, um, you know, when you get in the right light like that, see that mirror, I should have shown you guys that first. Cause that's uh, kind of what it looks like. Look at that, wow, light out piece of glass. Look at my finger. You can see my fingerprint. It's ridiculous. So, 
Um, you know, going up a bit, I've got some um, 8,000 grit water stones and 12,000 grit water stones I use for stropping and sharpening my straight razor. Um, I could really get those, um, uh, really get those marks out. But uh, again, for, for having this in your hand, um, and, you know, playing with it, especially because it's brass, it'll patina. This is the best way to get rid of the patina too, is you just, you don't have to re-sand anything. You just bring it on this here and um, you're good to go. All right, I'm doing a little hard, shaking the camera a little bit. I just want to get it kind of done. And then we'll do it a little softer, a little softer. I guess that's off to put in there. All right, so you can still see those scratches, not too bad, you can see my eyes. <gasps> but, uh, what did that? And it feels so nice, it feels so smooth, so. Uh, we're gonna dip that in the water, get all the little bit of, get all the little bit of bufferage out of there. All that little buffing blackness, buffing compoundness. And take a, uh, Take a paper towel, a cleaner one, get it on the inside. I gotta show you it's been, right? So I think I've been, it's been a while. I've kept you on this video for longer than most of my Spinner videos. Maybe you appreciate it, maybe you don't. Hey, if you appreciate it, let me know. Um, I dig the comments and people are shooting up and getting me a little more comments, a couple more subscribers. Um, you know, I don't talk about that stuff a whole lot, but um, you know, I, I do it because I want to put it out there for other people to see. I'm not just doing it for myself. So I appreciate all the, the comments, the likes, things you like, things you want to see, all that good stuff. So um, watch this, ready? So this is still using an Alphabot bearing. I haven't put a one drop bearing in it. I found with the one drop bearings that I knocked my camera over. Uh, I found with the one drop bearings that they're so smooth when you use a bar spinner, even a bar spinner as small as this, um, that you know there's just enough wobble from the bar spinner to kind of take away some of the awesomeness that is the smoothness in the one drop bearing. So. that mirror. You see my hand up here? Something like that. Oh, the reflection right now, there it is. Mm -hmm. Right, it's this nice little mirror in my hand. It's pretty sweet. Um, you know, so I'm definitely gonna do, I think, the tops of this one as opposed to the sides like I did last time. Although I might just do the whole thing and just leave this little blue ridge because I dropped it once and it's got a little bit of a ding in the corner. Not too bad, but that dropped on the sidewalk and didn't do too bad, so I was kind of impressed, so. Oh, but we're inside, so we're not getting the warping because the light's not quite bright enough as it is like in sunlight, so. But isn't that kind of reflection of my thumb cool, but you can still see through and see my fingers below. It's uh, a really nice little look. It's kind of fun. It looks even cooler in person, so. Uh, anyway, you know how I leave you guys. I'll leave you with a peace.